I mean, honestly, like I've talked about a million times, like we just don't talk about those things. And obviously he made that public. And, you know, listen, I love the fact that he wants to be here. Uh, and we've, we've had conversations about it. And I'm not going to disclose what we've talked about. But um, there's dialogue. And we'll keep that in-house. So. In general, do you get a little wary when a guy's in his early 30s and you're giving him contract essentials, especially teachers? Nah, I wouldn't talk about that. Yeah. I mean, looking back, have you ever really kind of engaged with a player like that deep into the season? I'm, th- I'm thinking about like Garza, Samarja, the KB, yeah. Bobby group. Like, I don't think I have. I have to think about it. Like, I, it's it's um. The Ian thing was obviously just <clears throat> picking up on spring training negotiations, so it's challenging going start to start. Um, I have to think through that if I ever have, but um, certainly it's it's a little bit unusual. Yeah. What's the difficulties of doing it at this point? What do you mean? Is it is it harder to do negotiations now? Would you think? I think in in theory, I think any in season negotiation is more difficult. You're getting different data, you know, every every five days and. Um, I, I think it can become more challenging, but I, I wouldn't discuss it with this in particular. But you know what the guy has done over the course of his career. Is it really that big a deal what he's doing every five days? Yeah, I'm just not going to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we've, we've, we've beaten this. And we've <laughs> talked about this in, in, in Anaheim as well. Like, I just feel like this is one where, you know, we don't talk about negotiations outside, you know, um, outside our, you know, our four walls. And we, we, we talk to the agents and we talk to the players and, you know, in this particular case, you know, he, he tweeted out, I guess, that, that, you know, that changes the dynamic, but it doesn't change our stance on it, which is we're just not going to comment. There's, there's zero benefit um, for the relationship with them to comment on it. There's zero benefit from the negotiating stance to comment on it. So, like, we don't benefit, and we're just not going to do it, and we've done that with every negotiation. So. The Fellinger in the way that he's progressing... Um, just what can you say about him and, and getting looks at first base in Iowa? Yeah. Um, well, we've always known he has that skill set. Obviously, he was a really good, um, really good first baseman. It's sort of a, in a way, you know, it is a little bit of a waste of a, a really great athlete and, and, and great outfielder to, to put him in first, which is obviously what the Dodgers ended up deciding when they, they put him out there. Um, he played a lot of center there, won a gold glove and right there. So, I mean, certainly the hope um, over time as he gets back out there, I think his, his biggest impact, you know, for – the Cubs is, is probably playing center field, but you know, as we um, ease him back into the lineup and, and um, get his legs underneath him and things like that, this makes a lot of sense. And I think Mike has, has played really well for us, is really good at bats, and um, at a time we've needed those at bats against right hand pitching. So uh, makes a lot of sense for us to do it now. But obviously, I like, think we just, we're not doing this because we see him as a as our first baseman for the rest of the year, but more as, as a way of, of getting him back in the lineup. Is there any issue or concern as well about just the knee and the sprinting in, in center field as he continues to to build up and, and work to coming back? I think that's part of it, you know. But but I mean, easing him back in. But you know, obviously, if we had if we had significant concerns about the knees, we wouldn't we wouldn't be bringing him back. So um, I think we we feel good about about where he is, and uh, hopefully he's back real soon. As I was just, say, just kind of speaking of knees, Brandon Hughes' knee is kind of been yeah. obviously a recurring. Yeah. Situation, just how would you just describe like what he's dealing with and yeah. and what that reality going forward is? We're probably reevaluating what we're doing. I think that we've we've tried so hard to continue to get him back out there and pitching, and obviously he's gone through a lot to, to do that. But you know, there's been glimpses of the pitcher he was last year for us. I think, but this has been glimpses, and the rest of the time, I think he's been dealing with some real discomfort, and so. Probably taking a step back a little bit and, and thinking about other different ways we can we can attack this because you know while he may be able to do it and I think he's tough and he wants the ball I also think it's, he hasn't been as effective and I think let's let's get him back to, to being that that effective pitcher so we're going to kind of reevaluate everything with regards to his knee. Do those options include like surgery? Is there a surgery? We, we we don't know yet. We're still in that process, but um, I mean I guess in theory everything would be on the table, but that's just to say we don't know yet. Where it's about when he's 100% ready and feels like he can give you know his all yeah. back. How close is he to that, and what have you seen from him? Uh, I, I think the challenge has been you know, just bouncing back. And I think that uh, obviously the velocity has been there throughout, um, but just just how he feels on a day-to-day basis. It, 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 that's the one of the biggest challenges of of a Tommy John rehab. And I was just talking to our trainers about that, that, that who have done a lot of Tommy John rehabs. Is that, you know, that's one of the bigger challenges. So. It's not just about how he pitches, but also it's 
his availability to, to bring him back and, and not have him be able to be available for a couple of days is really hard on the rest of the bullpen. So I think we'll bring him back and, and when, when he's obviously able to get guys out, but also when he's able to recover at the right pace. And, you know, we're not going to hurry that process along because we have this guy for a long time and we know he'll be real, really effective when he, when he is. Right now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We talked about like the weirdness of the balance schedule and like the lack of the last division games, but do they does that kind of make the division games like against the Pirates mean even more, especially considering the position yeah. they're in right now in the division? It does. I mean, it's just one fewer series. This feels like everything's been sort of backloaded. So we'll, as we go forward, we'll play a lot more games against the division. Um, it feels like the games are more crammed in. I guess maybe looking at the schedule, like I know we play these guys six games in a week and then we the Cardinals I think at the end of July we play them like I think it's like eight times in a in a really you know condensed area so um I'm enjoying it I think that um seeing all these other teams is is just good for baseball in general um and I think it's um you know it's, it's, it's good for competition overall so I'm, I'm in favor of it we're still getting used to it but I do think it's only one fewer series than we had before so just to think about like what do you guys eight or nine games back uh, whatever, it was. but like that. But you're still in the the way this division is set up. How do you kind of think about those two things? Like the fact that you could anyone could win this division. Yeah. So so yes, I think I think there's there's certainly you know it's probably rare to be at a point where like you would say that about a division in, in you know the middle of June where like I think any anyone can still win it, but no one is um, pulled away, you know, and and or, or even pulled away from 500, right. and. I think that's one of the challenges of evaluating your team is that you're, you're evaluating where you are in the standings, but you're also evaluating like how you're performing. And some of that is, um, you know, component numbers, but some of that is like where you are in relation to 500 as well. So I think all of those things are, are going to be are, are a factor going forward, but it is unusual. Like, you know, this division, um, there's a lot of young talent in this division. Now, I think that this, this division is going to be really strong going forward, but obviously right now in, in 2023, you know, no one's really gotten very far away from from 500 at all. I think these guys are these three over and they're in first. You know, and so that's uh, certainly unusual in the middle of middle of June. How does that? And how does that? You know, I guess like you said, as the month goes on, the next month goes on, you have to make decisions about where you're going. What's more important, do you think, the future? Set yeah. up for the future? Is well, I think we have a ways to go. I mean, we have you know <clears throat> six full weeks really. You know, to to get to the end of July, a lot. You know, a, a lot happens in that. In that time, I think we've, we've only what played what ten weeks so far. So, you know, we have six we have six more to, to play to, to get a feel for where we are, and you know, we I think we have to evaluate all of that, you know. Um, but yeah, it, it does. I mean, obviously, um, given where we are in relation to five hundred, I, I think in a normal season we would be looking at a much steeper climb than we are right now, and obviously that that's a fortunate thing. Right now, just days you're going to be going to London. How does it impact? Like it, your on it? Yeah, it's fun. I mean, um, it, are there inconveniences uh, and challenges from a baseball standpoint with travel and days off and all those things? Yeah, of course. But I mean, it's a pretty cool thing to be able to do. I think that the, the players will have a blast. I think we'll have a really good time, and um, it's good for the league, you know. Um, and everyone I've talked to that that did the trip and was at nineteen, I think it was, um, really enjoyed it. They said it was everything was first class and everything was 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 it was a really good baseball and personal experience and so yeah i'm looking forward to it i think the players are looking forward to it and any inconveniences or whatever those things might be i think they're just um you just have to brush those aside and realize um the totality of what we're going to experience is pretty awesome last year you were in iowa now you're going to london big difference yeah big di- yeah big difference yeah might be easier to get to london but yeah <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel like he's trending in the right direction, and you know, I think I felt like that road trip for him, that the the game in uh, the game in Houston and then the game in Philly. Obviously, he was really struggling, and um, you could see him searching on the mound, you know, from a, from a, in his body language. And I feel like we've seen a lot more confident guy, and hopefully, can just keep building off of building off of that. And you know, I still think. He's on the ascent, and I think that's a, that's a good thing for us. Uh, with Kyle, you guys have talked so much about getting back to being Kyle. Yeah. Is that like watching? Yeah, it was so, I wish I'd been there. It was so fun to watch. And, and I found myself rooting so hard for him to get it because I think it's it's so hard for a contact pitcher to 
have a chance at, at that. And then obviously just uh, it would have been such a wonderful thing, you know, given the you know, how hard he had to rehab and, and come back from it. But now I've said it a million times, he's as good a teammate as I've been around and as good a competitor as I've been around in my career. And um, you just you want people like that to, to succeed. And um, I think you kind of watch that game with a smile on your face, knowing that he was in control. I think we've seen that guy pitch a lot of times in the past where, you know, you kind of get to that place in the middle innings where you're like, all right, this is, you know, he's controlling their bat speed, the weak contact over and over. And, um, yeah, it was fun to, fun to watch again. Hopefully we see a lot more of that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know his strikeout rate has been been pretty good over the last five, you know, five uh, or so outings, and hopefully he can uh, you know stabilize that a bit. It's a game of adjustments. You know, last year he started out hot, and then uh, the season ended. You know, who knows where he would have gone from there? But um, that's the hope, right? You know, he started out hot. Uh, carrying on what he did in Iowa obviously he struggled for a bit and the hope would be that that like he makes that adjustment back I think that's the that's the challenge of this league is like that the pitchers are going to adjust to you or hitters are going to adjust to you whoever side you're on and you have to be able to you know na- take that next step and be able to adjust back and um, hopefully we're seeing the start of that right now Yeah, it was good to uh, see him have a great outing today. Um, he's been really good all year. You know, he's had you know, a couple a couple bad outings, but like the, the totality of the however you know, 11, 12 starts he's made has been has been really excellent. Strikeout rate is, is, has been phenomenal, and um, you know we love you know, love you know, getting to know him in spring training a little bit after after the trade last year, and I, I feel like he's a, a real competitor. I think he. Uh, he knows his uh, his future is on is in the big leagues, and it's, it's nice to see a guy with that kind of confidence and conviction. And um, you know, there's no doubt he's going to help this organization a lot. What is where you guys kind of stand on his place in the near term plans? I guess I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> yeah. What can you say about Brennan Davis and just the way he's trying to recover and, and how he's doing now? You know, I don't know where he's at. I'm assuming he's a hunt. Hunt for percent is close as he is, but the, obviously. Yeah, we'll, over the next few days, we'll probably like, have some more news on that. I mean, he's seeing doctors, you know, and um, just trying to get to the bottom of, you know, he hasn't, you know, he's he's been out there. Yeah, he, he obviously hasn't been impacting the ball the same way he did. The power hasn't been there. And just trying to get to the bottom of it because we've seen him when he's right and how how much he can, how impactful he can be. That's not where he is right now. And we just need to get to the bottom of, uh, you know, what is ailing him physically and what, what we can do about it. Is it, there's like back related stuff. It's not back related. Okay. Yeah. Oh, one more on Kyle. Yes. Yeah. Like in hindsight, when you guys shut him down, you hear Capsular tail, like what was the level of concern that like maybe you wouldn't come back or wouldn't have days like you did in San Francisco? Like, yeah, it was a real, real level of concern. Um, like whenever you hear, yeah, hear shoulder and things like that, you have, you have significant concern, and um, I feel like we. We approached it with a his rehab with a real level of caution, and I think he did as well. Where we we took our time, we we sort of probably took a slower path than we we could have to make sure he came back healthy. And then even in spring training, we had the discussion of let's work on you know upping your velocity, even though you know, you're not going to be throwing 94. You know the the separation from his fastball and his changeup is is a significant part of what makes him good and. Um, we took a little bit more time than we probably could have, in, you know, in spring training and early season, and I feel like that, you know, that looks like it's, it's paying off. But um, you know, the slowness of the rehab and the, you know, the care that we took, I think, was in part because of the level of concern. And I'm just thrilled for him that he's back and, and feeling good. Kind of going off of that, to have it be so soon coming back, you're pretty impressive to have it happen like that. Yeah, and it's. Uh, it's a good indication sometimes what the value of um, like minor league rehab stats are worth. You know, he was he struggled early on, and I think it took him a little bit of time to get used to the clock and this get used to competing again. And you know, I felt like watching his uh, his early couple outings, the stuff looked better, but you could see there was probably some um, unease or anxiety as he was kind of getting used to doing it on this stage again with some new rules in place. And the last few times out, he looked totally at ease and, and uh, in control of, of his craft and. 
It's, it is fun in, in a game where everyone's throwing you know 98 at the top of the zone with a power breaking ball. It is really fun to watch someone uh, manipulate a lineup through you know guile and game planning and sinkers and change ups, and uh, it's fun to watch because we don't see that on a night to night basis anymore. Obviously, you know what Matt Mervis can do, and just what have you seen from him up here so far? He's still adjusting. I, you know, he's uh, obviously really talented, but this is the highest level and it's hard to adjust here and um, you know he's, he's working hard to, to make those adjustments and you know, hopefully he got the knock last night hopefully that um, you know can, can lead to some things for him but um, it, you know sort of like you know, you know he's going to be a really talented player at this level um, but it, you know it comes with adjustments it comes with ups, ups and downs it always does or almost always does and um, you know, sometimes it doesn't come with those adjustments early we're talking about morell it comes later on so um you know, he's very smart. He's he's struggled a little bit in the minors and made those adjustments, and I have no doubt he'll make them up here. A guy like Miguel Amaya, I mean, what stood out to you? Obviously, you've missed so much time the last couple of years, but just in the few opportunities he's had in the big leagues, offensively and defensively. Um, probably his calmness. You know, he takes really good at bats, doesn't doesn't panic at the plate, and the thing that all the, all the pitchers um, talked about throwing him, and even the fielders were just like this level of poise was was really impressive and. I think of all the positions, that's the hardest one to come up and, and break in because you're handling so many different things and, and you know, being able to handle it with enough poise to, to, to pit, have a veteran pitcher be able to pitch to you, you know, call a game, things like that, it's really, really difficult. And he did that really well. I mean, all the players were commenting on it. And Danji came in right away. He's like, you know, and Nico, this guy is really um, – has a level of calmness and poise that they were they were surprised but I think that's the biggest thing that stood out and um, you know there's real thump on the bat as well so he's a guy that I think um, and we did as well we're, you know people sort of forgot about through those you know that you know, the, you know he was at the all side and he was so good in 2020 but then 21 and 22 is sort of lost seasons for him where you know he had uh, you know the Tommy John and the Liz Frank injury and um, you know I think uh, he's reminding people of why he was a, a top prospect now how much does it help when it's, it's one area that you can hone in? I always saw with Adbert, that was an issue. Yeah, yeah, that's a, and that's a, a, a good one, right? Like Adbert has handled lefties well this year, and um, he's made those adjustments. I thought Wes you know, did a pretty good job against those guys last, last year in the big leagues, and you know, he'll, he'll make that adjustment. Obviously, I think he's, he's shown flashes this year of, um, of, of being really, really good. I thought, like, you know, the game in Tampa, he came out of the bullpen, he threw, he threw great in that game. Um, but obviously he's had some games where he struggled with the, with the long ball and struggled with lefties, and um, he'll figure it out. Um, you know, it's uh, you know, last year he, he pitched great. You know, the team probably, probably made some adjustments to him, and um, he probably needs to adjust back.